So when I was last up on this stage yesterday, I was summarizing day one morning sessions on what is gender-based violence. We learned that it is, to use the words of Vic Health, prevalent, serious, and preventable. So in the afternoon yesterday, we asked the question, well, how is it preventable? We, we, heard a first, uh, oh, we heard first a personal story, courageously and boldly told by Ange Barker, a young woman who has been severely, severely disabled by the violence she experienced as a teenager at the hands of a violent, controlling boyfriend. During the break, audience members, members described to me Ange's story as gut-wrenching, devastating, and hard to watch. But audience members also commented on Angie's courage to now speak out as an advocate for change in ending violence against women. One audience member commented that seeing stories like this has renewed her commitment to this work. That's a quote, it's renewed her commitment to this work. We then heard from Paul Lenossier, uh, CEO of Our Watch, who framed violence against women as not just a crime, but as a breach of human rights. Paul presented the evidence that worldwide, worldwide, as a country's gender equality improves, the prevalence of partner violence and sexual violence decreases. He helped us understand that primary prevention is work that aims to challenge attitudes that support gender inequality, sexism, and attitudes that support violence or justify it. Paul outlined the new role of Our Watch, AKA the Foundation for Prevention of Violence Against Women, which will tackle violence through media campaigns and projects across a range of settings that will be used to build the evidence for primary prevention of violence against women. Paul called for fierce leadership in this area, and he showed a powerful video of David Morrison calling on men and women to be ruthless in stamping out sexism in their workplaces. Paul reminded us that the prevention of violence against women is a long-term project. And he spoke of a future 20 years from now where women are seen participating more equally across society and prevention is in sight through sector collaboration. We then had a very lively panel discussion. Um, we, we heard first from Marie Crabb, co-founder of Reality and Risk, who gives a grim picture of online pornography and its widespread use and helped us understand how porn and violence against women intersect. She described how pornography uh, she describes how pornography is eroticized, has eroticized and actually made sexy the underlying causes of violence against women by eroticizing gender inequality, by making sexy rigid gender norms, by eroticizing violent behavior. We then heard from Bob Pease from Deakin University. How to summarize Bob Pease? <clears throat> Um, well, I, I had a look on Facebook yesterday and had a look at um, some comments that Clementine Ford posted on her Facebook yesterday, and I quite liked her summary. She uh, pretty much described it as, Bob's perspective is a little less engaging men and a little more smashing patriarchy. Yeah. But, <laughs> Bob presented a challenge to the current model that we are using, which is based on a medical model. But Bob questioned if this is the right way forward because violence against women is not a disease. Bob challenged what he called the softly, softly approach and called on us to use more direct language. He says we must dismantle patriarchy, the power structure in society that privileges men at every level. He said that by saying, quote, most men aren't violent, it gives men the impression that they have no responsibility for dismantling the system and this deeply concerns him. Uh, we next heard from Patty Kinnersley, uh, CEO of Women's Health Grampians, who spoke right after, after um, Bob did. And she talked about that gender roles are so embedded in us from before birth that we must meet people where they are um, and have some compassion for that. We can't expect people to flick the switch overnight. Patty acknowledged the complexity of the situation that Bob was talking about and the reality that women often cannot use the language Bob was using because men simply won't listen to women when women are using that language. Bob acknowledged this, but held deep concern that our approach parallels an abused woman walking on eggshells, afraid to upset men. All panelists agreed about the frustration of the slow pace of change, that this is a long-term project we're working on, and some new ideas emerged from this panel. They called for gender training in kindergartens, programs to assist men in nurturing caring roles, respectful relationships education from a young age ongoing in development, developmentally appropriate ways, equal pay for female-dominated industries 
as, ma as male-dominated industries, feminist think tanks, and a call for government support. And finally, we heard from Tui Lelucio, a personal story that he presented about growing up surrounded by a culture where violence was normalized. He's a man who's, who made a conscious choice that violence stops with him, stops here. Essentially, that violence is a choice. Men can choose to stop it and that it's preventable. Um, I'm now going to introduce Marie Crabb, who is going to provide a summary for this morning's event. Thanks, Jan. So this morning we've had another great range of speakers. We began with Gail Jennings from the Centre for Advancing Journalism at the University of Melbourne. And she spoke about how violence against women is the greatest crime story in our country. Yet it is underreported and it's reported without its social context. She eloquently explained how mainstream media is overwhelmingly run by men. It's shareholders, board members, executives, editors, bylines, opinion pieces and expert voices are overwhelmingly male. She described how the media affects people's lives by shaping our opinions, attitudes and beliefs. It controls social life by invisibly transferring the dominant ideology. And in doing so, it perpetuates the community attitudes that result in men's violence against women. We then had a panel, how is it everybody's business? Jenny Hill, Victorian co-administrator of Destroy the Joint, spoke about how online campaigning is a really useful tool and can engage a very wide audience. She also spoke about some of its, in, its challenges, including that some men seem to be very threatened by women and by equality. Indeed, some men seem to hate women and engage in aggressive and degrading behaviours directed at Destroy the Joint as they do towards others. Jenny said she doesn't understand why they do it, but Destroy the Joint sees part of its role as shining a light on that behaviour as part of broader efforts. A lot of organisations look at doing prevention of men's violence against women externally in the broader community, but Joanne Mulcahy, Chair of Yarra City Council's Gender Equity Committee, spoke about how the city of Yarra is applying the gender lens to its own policies and practices. And Rosie Batty asked the question, where have we got to? How far have we come when we're singing along as part of a major sporting event, the AFL's grand final, to a song that is about murdering a former intimate partner? She said that she would like to see the media continue to lift its game, to see a shifting away from victim blaming to discussing perpetrator behavior. And finally this morning, we heard from Rodney Vlay, acting CEO of No to Violence. And he made the connections between men's violence against women and not only sexism and rape culture, but also homophobia, transphobia, disabilism and racism. He spoke about addressing male entitlement and privilege and violence supportive masculinities. Thank you, Mary. Um, just one last thing to um, summarize, I guess. Um, so yesterday, there was a session that took place, which was actually a closed session, which essentially means that we didn't advertise it for people um, who, are, who are here to go to. Um, it was set up f by Centre for Nonviolence for um, people in this region, women in this region who are media advocates, or, so survivors of um, violence who have been trained to become advocates for prevention and um, women participating in the Community Legal Center Prevention Project. Um, the purpose of this closed session was to come together to talk about the role that media av advocacy can play in the regional action plan for Lot and Mali for prevention of violence against women and how women's voices and experiences can be captured for this. Um, so. Uh, uh, a few dot points, uh, well actually a, a lot of dot points came out of that, some really important things, but um, Robin Trainer from Centre for Nonviolence um, has put together a few of the key messages that she wanted to be shared here because since it was a closed session obviously none of you were part of that and we do want to make sure that women's voices are, are heard in this. So from those sessions um, came out the need to channel women's collective power of experience. Women's voices and experiences of violence need to be represented well in the media 
We need to see a diverse range of experience of all forms of violence and the patterns of violence. We need strong images of women, strong women going about their daily business. Um, we need to pay attention to the language that we're using and make sure we have key messages that are being used by multiple organizations. Those are really important. When you're talking about oh, something that um, she said that I, I quite love, that I think, I think somebody said, was when you were talking about one in three women, you were talking about me. So it's bringing back that personal experience. It's not just a stat, this is a person behind the one in three. We need to create more opportunities to have these conversations, so women, to come, women who are survivors to come together and have these conversations. The expertise is in the room with them. They are the experts of this. Um, and finally, uh, they called on the need to use experience to create change in, just, in the justice system, so with courts and police, because those systems often re-victimize -victim, uh, these women. Thank you.